Welcome back to Sybil. At the end of the last episode, time went forwards by four months. And Nina and Blake were planning some sort of a trip, some sort of a meetup. So let's see what's happened in those four months. New selfies. Oh, that's such a cool outfit. Look at that. Like, horizontal, striped pants. That's so cool. <laughs> is that... Is that a... Like a... Is that a body pillow back there? Oh my god, I think that might be a body pillow. And there's sparkles. There's sparkles in the picture. Wow. Oh, it looks like these are from Blake. <laughs> dog. Happy dog, excited dog. Okay, that's all of these, plus pictures. Uh, high school again. Okay, yeah, so these we definitely have seen now. Oh, these we have not seen. Oh my. I think that's the first time we've seen a a sexy selfie from Blake. Okay, that's it for selfies. New downloads. Oh, I'm not very good at reading handwritten stuff, so I don't think I'm going to try to read that, because I just completely stumble over it. So if you want to read that for yourself, you can go ahead and pause the video. <laughs> the bow just says, happy. That's cute. Send it to Ichi. Ah, it's a poem. Thermal. There is a curiosity and tang in our lips unbuttoning. I see the outline of a static ship dipping under the shadow of your shoulder, bunching my hair up in your hand, heat exhaling onto my falling lip, which inhales words to be swallowed, the soft bite of orange, pulled in by my back's parabola. We are hourglass nebula in a stellar wind without the sun. To tell our time, and the only burn to feel is the pulse of your neck on my palm, pressed closer to the blood, consciously. Separated by mere cells, trillions of bits of you wind around me. The ovals of your arms I feel on my waist folding into yours. In and out of my squinted eyes pass stars too far away to see the spiraling gases sighing to mingle with our sighs and the moisture from our lips evaporating, my back leaving slender trails of sweat on the wall. Space filling curves in a two-dimensional plane, the precise entrance of a continuous move overflowing, muscles peaked. To direct my eyes over your back and into the sharp sky, separated from me by a single pane of glass. Once again, I do not get poetry, and I barely understood what any of that meant other than something about touching each other. Ah, maybe one day I'll get poetry. <laughs> oh 
home underscore one. That's a great photo. I like the framing, how the center of the photo has nothing in it. <laughs> Just a white wall. Okay, that's everything except chat log for August. From Becca. Hesi is coming out next week. Want to play together on release day? Yeah, let's do it. I haven't seen you online this much lately. Yeah, I don't know. I mostly only play when Blake's online these days. School is getting pretty busy, you know. And now that Blake and I talk on the phone so much, I don't feel like I need to be in Valtimeri to talk to him. Are you guys official yet or what? Nah, labels are dumb anyways. <laughs> Did you ask him why he doesn't want to seal the deal and be your boyfriend? No, that's awkward. Okay. Hmm. So they're still, even after, what has this been like, about six months or so? That they've been, like, talking really, really, uh, really frequently at this point? And they're both sending each other sexy selfies. But he still doesn't want to be her boyfriend, like, officially? Why? What do you think of Brad? Oh, jeez. No, I'm looking at who's going to the party this weekend on Facebook, thinking about who you should date. <laughs> I mean, he's aight. I think he's adorable. You should go have a crush on him. I mean, Kyle is priority. But Brad is cute. No, there are too many dudes, way too many dudes right now. <laughs> I want you and Brad to make out. No, yes, I don't want that. Fine. swimsuit you lent me is cute. I took some pics in it, and Blake said it looked cute. Nice. It was nice to hear that. I've been feeling so gross, like I look gross. No, 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 you're not. God. It's no surprise you and Blake get along. You're both so self-deprecating. Yeah, we've been over this. I always end up liking the self-loathing type. <laughs> I don't get that. I mean, I have the same problem. Low self-esteem. It's something we have in common, as weird as that sounds. He understands me in that way. That's good, I guess. Huh. So, Blake is similar in that way? I didn't get that from any of the things he was saying. I mean, I guess he did say once that if he was... Uh, didn't he say when he was chatting with her in Valtimeri that if he was ever actually near her, he wouldn't even be able to breathe? Because she's so hot, he wouldn't be able to handle it? So I guess that was kind of self-deprecating. But other than that, I didn't get the feeling that he was super... Like, had super low self-esteem. Is that why he doesn't want to officially be her boyfriend? Like, he doesn't feel worthy or something? blog site, so I think these are all, yeah. Is this new? Yeah, this is definitely new. I'm discovering some new musicians. Making a note here. Thanks to Becca for a lot of these. Blake shared some too. Huh, I think the only one I actually recognize is Deer Hunter. It's a blog draft. Okay, hi. I have been terrible about updating my old website, so it's on an indefinite hiatus. I'm going to try to update this WordPress blog more often. I have so many things to talk about, but I don't have enough time to write it all down. Between Blake, Voltimary, and school, I don't have much alone time these days to take care of my websites. Blake and I are doing well, though, so it's worth it. Actually, my friends are pretty jealous that I spend so much time with him in Voltimary, or on the phone, or whatever. Becca was like, Of course, now that you have a guy, you just ignore me. That hurt my feelings, because I haven't been ignoring her, I'm just super busy. And honestly, I want to talk to Blake all the time. I really love him. What does she expect me to do? <sighs> Anyways, I'm in class now, and the professor just got here, so I'm going to stop writing now.
So that's all of those. Let's take a look at Homework Tuesday. Another poem that I'm probably going to butcher. Red Weather. Hand on wound up waist. Belly button stitched waist. A line of text. Waist, waist, and blanket. What? He just like endlessly mentions waist. Softly waist touching the lightning bolt inside my... Okay, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm... If I haven't butchered every single other poem before, I feel like I'm going to butcher this one like extra hard. And I also seriously do not get what it's even talking about. So if you want to read this poem, uh, go ahead and pause the video now. Give you a couple seconds. Okay. I just don't get poetry. Travel notes. Round trip, JFK to LAX. Maybe at the start of summer break. <laughs> oh my god, this is... Uh, this is so freaking familiar to me, this this text file full of prices and different carriers and times. Adding up the total price. Plus food and cab and stuff like that and transportation. That is so familiar to me. Because I have a long distance girlfriend and I've gone through exactly the same thing. Made lists, compared prices. Ah... Uh. Ask Becca if you can tell your mom that you're staying with her for a week. Ask Blake if you can stay with him. Okay, so I guess they still have not met yet. From Sybil. Visited my parents. It's pretty, but New York City is so much more fun. Okay, so she's the one that lives in New York City. And he's the one that lives in California, right? <laughs> Lol, Comic Con. Goog? What the heck does that mean? Oh, that's such a cool outfit, too. Oh my god. I want to. I want to buy clothes now. I want to go buy clothes. Ah, l later. That can wait. <laughs> From Ichi, yo. Just got back from visiting NorCal. Sorry I couldn't call you all week. I miss talking with you. But my friend kept me busy. You told me to get a pic, so here it is. Warning, it's dumb. See you online later. <laughs> that is kind of a dumb picture. <laughs> Looks like he's yeah, just mid-drink out of a water bottle. Shirtless. On a like a patio or a balcony. Should have that framed, Blake. Morning. What's up? Not much. You really want to do Heesey Run? Isn't it like 5 a.m. there? Yeah, I've been up for hours. It's chill. Wow. <laughs> do you ever sleep? Oh my, that burns my eyes. That red. You said the other day that you'd think about living on the west coast a lot. Like, near me? Yeah. It would be so cool if you could come hang out with me and my real life friends. Austin and Andrew? Yeah, we could just go chill at the beach or something. <laughs> Do you think they'd like me? Don't you get along with everyone? <laughs> Maybe. Hold on, got some messages here. 
What's up? Rex is pissed at you. <laughs> Why? Sib, stop ignoring me. What's up? I wasn't ignoring you. I was looking at your Facebook. Oh, this is the creepy guy. The one that said, er, hot. She's jealous that you never talk to her anymore. You're always with Ichi. Russia told me he thinks you're cute. I know you used to like him. What happened? Yeah, I did a while ago. I don't know, that feels kind of unfair. Her and I still chat all the time. Yo, I know what's going on with you and Ichi. What are you talking about? Everyone knows. Stop trying to hide it. Knows what? What are you going off about? Hmm, so I guess... I guess they haven't really told anyone else that much about their relationship. I mean, it sounds like... Well, as we already know, she's still not... Um... Like, he still doesn't even want to officially call himself her boyfriend, I guess. So I guess they also haven't told other people. Ooh, canoe price alert. Round trip. So that's for her to go meet with him, right? Yeah, from New York to Los Angeles. Oh, it's sold out. Seriously, though. What if we met? You want to? Yeah. I mean... You told me that you love me. I love you too. I want to meet you in person. Yeah. So, what do you think? About what? Meeting. I want that. But I also want no relationship whatsoever. I could be single forever, it's comfortable. I... Yeah... Wait, what do you mean? Relationships are... Attempts at living in... Normalcy. I guess so? I'm antisocial, so those normal relationships don't fit my lifestyle. You're the leader of our ampule. How can you be antisocial? I don't know, I just don't think relationships are comfortable. You've never been in one, so how do you know that? I don't like leaving my securities on. I'm less antisocial and more anti connections. Then. How did this happen? So he doesn't want any commitments whatsoever. Oh my god, this Giver guy is such a freaking douchebag. First he's all like, You're hot, I got this picture that I'm not supposed to have from this person. And then your friend Kate is really hot. I saw it on your Facebook. Really? Yeah, she's pretty. God, what a douchebag. From Becca, are you okay? Why weren't you in class? 
Oh, she skipped class. You told class. me you loved me two months ago, and you've been telling me that every day since. How have we been talking on the phone every night? Like, for... I don't know. Hence, my confusion. <sighs> since when were you confused? I don't know. Blake, I really care about you. I know. Me too. We should just meet. I think we need to see each other in person. I do want to meet you. This can work. Yeah. If we met, though. Do you want to, like, really spend time together? I mean, are we gonna kiss and make out? All that stuff? Do you want to? Yeah, I think so. Me too. I don't know what would happen. I don't even know what I want to happen. But I do think about it a lot. What do you think about? We talked about this before. I feel attracted to you, physically. Yeah? When we met, I probably couldn't help it. I'd want to kiss you. Yeah? And? Whatever stuff, I don't know. <laughs> I get it, Blake. I think the same thing. What do you think? <sighs> I should tell you. I've never had sex before. I haven't either. Wait, really? Are you serious? I haven't. So we uh I I told you, relationships are weird for me, so I've just never been in this situation. Yeah, I totally get it. It's crazy to me, though, because you're, like, super hot. I'm a skinny ghost, dude. Girls do not want to fuck me. <laughs> I don't know. From Professor South, I reviewed your poem, which is attached below. I just wanted to send you a note that I really enjoyed it. I hope you'll share it in class tomorrow. Oh, that's the one from before, right? Yeah, thermal. It could happen. It? Well, we could have sex for the first time together. Do you not like that idea? Physically, yes. Mentally, I'm not sure how to deal with that feeling. What do you mean? I'm used to immersing myself in this game. I don't like thinking about dealing with people in person. If you want to meet me... I know, I'd have to figure out how to be... how to feel normal about it. I don't know. We love each other. That's not just in the game. I rely on the game. I feel comfortable with my relationships inside this game. I don't know about real life. It's okay if you're nervous. I am too. I'm not nervous. I'm just not used to this. It's weird for me that I like you this much. I'm really glad you feel that way. That I feel weird. That you like me. I told you, Blake, I love you. Nina. Yeah? I like thinking about you being far away from whoever, just us. I really have no idea why I feel like that, but maybe it could happen. 
I want that. I don't want a relationship, but I want you. I don't know. Please, let's meet and figure this out. We need to talk face to face. Face to face, huh? Okay, I'll come. I'll ask my mom to buy a flight to New York. I'll tell her I want to visit my cousins there. Really? You think she'd believe you? Yes. <sighs> okay. You can stay with me. I live in a dorm here, so you could just stay, like, here? Okay. So, you really mean it. We're doing this. Yes. I don't know what will happen. I have no expectations. I think it'll be good. We've been talking for a long time in the game, so it makes sense, logically, that we should meet. We should. Yeah. I know. Okay, I don't want to ruin the mood, but I just want to point out that this music is so creepy. It's so, like, filled with tension, I feel like he's about to pull out a knife and kill her or something. Do you think we'll ever see each other again? Nina, I had fun, but... Fucked up. What? What do you mean? I 
I shouldn't have come. I knew I shouldn't. Blake. What are you talking about? I don't love you. What? We can chat. I've got to catch my plane. I'll see you online tomorrow, Nina. I'm sorry. Okay, I take back what I said about Blake. I said he seemed like a bit of a douchebag, but... Now he just seems really, really confused. Just very confused. He didn't seem to understand his own feelings at all, for some reason. Yeah, I read some, uh... I read some reviews of this game on Steam before I played it, and a common complaint that I kept hearing about is how it ends so abruptly. And I'm definitely feeling that as well, I mean, like, I could feel something like this coming where it's pretty obvious the relationship doesn't work out perfectly, and that they end up breaking up or perhaps even not getting a together in the first place, since I guess he was never technically her boyfriend, it seems like. I guess that's kind of what they, uh, the reason they met, is to determine what they are. Are they a couple? Do they want to be a couple? I guess he never was, actually, her boyfriend. But, uh, yeah, people were saying that it ended abruptly, and it really does. I don't feel like there's enough, like, enough time to, to really come to grips with how this has affected Nina after the breakup I mean it must have been really hard to spend so much time with this person and then have them say I don't actually love you this was a mistake I mean that must feel horrible right like I want to know more about how that makes or how that made Nina feel I you didn't really get to see that I can just assume that she was really sad and depressed after all that and disappointed, but I don't actually know. Like, I want to see more about how she felt about that. More of that being discussed, it, it just happened so, so quickly. I mean, literally, it was like, what, 10, 15 seconds? He just said this was a mistake, I'm sorry, we'll talk later, and then that's it. Like, I want to, I want to see more of a discussion between them, more of them talking about their feelings, more of how she reacted to what happened, and stuff like that. It just feels like it comes to a conclusion way too soon. I, I want more out of the end. I want to know more about the characters, more about their, their motivations and their feelings. But everything leading up to the end was pretty dang good. So yeah, just to kind of summarize my thoughts about this game in total, as a whole, I really did enjoy it, even though I don't like the ending very much and it feels really unsatisfying to not... Uh, it doesn't just feel unsatisfying, but it also feels kind of incomplete to not know more about what happened at the at the end. Uh, but overall, despite that, I really liked it. There's two big things that I liked about Sybil. The first is that it's just such a personal thing. It's just such a personal creation, and I really like that and I want to see more games like that. And the other is the way in which the story is told. That it, uh, the way it's told through finding just pictures and emails and instant messages and stuff like that on her computer. I think that's so cool. 
it's such a fun and, and interesting way to tell a story, not to tell it in like one big cutscene or something like that. But the fact that you just have to find it, and it kind of, the, the story bubbles to the surface by you searching around and finding all these little artifacts of day-to-day -day life. Emails and little notes and little pictures and old pictures and old notes from years ago from when you were, you know, a small child. I think that's so cool. It's really very similar to how, uh, to how Gone Home told its story, except in the digital age, where Gone Home told its story through finding physical paper that was handwritten, and there were no computers of any sort. This is pretty similar to that, in that you find everyday stuff, and that tells a story, except it's all within the computer. And yeah, I just really like that form of storytelling. I think it's really effective. There's something really nice about that. And the fact that you get to discover every piece on your own, and piece it together, and... It always resembles... Real life so much. There's so- I mean, there's so much to, that I can identify with in Sybil. And that's another thing that I really like about it. It's so identifiable. All the funny, silly things that you did as a kid, and... Stuff that you look back on and think, Oh god, that was so- that was so cheesy, or like, why did I do that? But, you know, like, we all did them. We all did those things, or some of them. And I could just see myself in all those artifacts from, from Nina's childhood. And that was so cool. And uh, all the stuff about trying to deal with, like, a long-term relationship and meeting somebody. And playing an MMO with people for a long time and making friends through MMOs. You know, all that has also happened to me, so I, I see so much of myself in the game, and I like that. I like when games reflect real life so much. But it doesn't happen enough. I want to see more of that. Aside from the ending, which I already talked about, the only other things I can think of that I didn't like about Sybil would be there's kind of an, uh, a sense of awkwardness in the way that you control the game. Uh, this comes across mostly... For me, it comes across mostly in the fact that when you open windows and stuff on the desktop in the game, you can't move the windows or anything like that. You can't really do any of the normal stuff that you do when you're using a computer. And, of course, I get that the game wasn't attempting and it would be completely out of the scope of the game to fully simulate an operating system. So I don't expect to be able to do every single thing an operating system can do, but I think just like one basic thing would have helped a lot, and that's just being able to move the windows. It felt so awkward, the way they crowded sometimes, and uh, it just felt so static, and I really wanted to grab the windows. Maybe that sounds like a weird thing, but it really drove me crazy that I couldn't move the windows. It was just so strange. Um, and the other thing is, when you're actually playing the MMO, the controls for that are, they're not too good. They don't feel too good. Um, the pathfinding, especially, is really awkward. Uh, Sybil, in Valtimeri, kept getting stuck on, on corners and stuff all the time, constantly getting stuck, and it made just moving around really awkward. Which, I felt like that detracted from the rest of the game, because the MMO portion of the game is really supposed to just, as far as I can tell at least, it's supposed to just be a backdrop to the other stuff, to the conversations with Blake, to the messages that she's receiving, and the new posts, and stuff like that. It's really supposed to be a, a backdrop, so I feel like it would have been better if I was able to more... kind of zone out the MMO, if the MMO was less important, but... moving around was so awkward that I had to keep clicking and focusing on the MMO just to... just to make stuff happen. I had to keep, like, micromanaging the movement of the character. And that distracted from my ability to pay attention to the other, more important stuff that was happening. So that felt pretty awkward. So those would be my only complaints about the game. Kind of a feeling of awkwardness in a lot of the interactions, especially the MMO part. And also the ending. Felt very incomplete. But overall, it's a really interesting experience, and I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it as well, and thank you for watching.